and find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. So you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task, and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn? bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Good afternoon. Welcome to Yarn Lane. We are the only shopping talent in the UK that is totally dedicated to yarn, whether it be crocheting or knitting or animal making or macrame or all those wonderful things. Tatting, we do tatting as well. Uh, so I'm going to start the show by taking you to our website, first of all, so that you can get show you how you can get in touch and show you how you can buy. Uh, the telephone number here is slightly different. It's different, not slightly, it's different to the Sewing Street uh, phone number, even though we are sister channels. 0800 4 700 600 is the number. Go to the website, www.yarnlane.com. Click on Watch the Show Live. And then underneath, everything that we've got for this hour is all listed there. Now, we will be showing it to you because we've got them in obviously different, different colourways. So on the panel there, they all look like they're the same colourway. I'm going to go through all of them now, tell you the names, tell you the colourways and everything like that so you can start buying now. But aren't they beautiful? I've got them behind me here. We have the cover act here on this side, which is just, I mean, the colours are just incredible, aren't they? Beautiful. So that's the cover act. And then on this side, I've got the Dakota. 
depending on what you want. Obviously, this one's bigger, isn't it, than that one? Uh, but I'm going to take you through all the yarns and the patterns now. So if we start with the cover rack, right? I've got now, oh, now, aren't these unusual? I'll ask all about these in a second, but aren't these lovely? So you get two of these and you get the instructions. Oh, hang on, the name on the yarn. That's right, this one is called, oh, no, I haven't got a name of a colour. What colour is that one? The actual yarn. A, a number, but not a colour. So I can tell you QCA378. There's no colour colour. It's oh, where it says Feidebeer. Feidebeer. This is German. On the back here. Faber? Yeah. That's right. Faber 2417. That's the number. That's the number. That's the colour Sometimes number. Sometimes <laughs> they have like, you know, like anthracite or something like that, don't they? It's a nice colour. So that's your black and white version there. Cat's just sorting it. Oh, of course. We'll just be with you in a second. On the wool, on the yarn, it is QCA378. Now, it's all in German. It's a lovely label, but it's all in German. Hang on a bit. Uh, my, my German only goes as far as Carlis Krankter, Dr. Weber, Komsu, Ihm. 100% virgin wool. And it's called what? Base. Bass. Base. That's the colour of it. There you go. So you get both of those anyway. And you, the pattern to make this. Cover rack. 36.99. These are gorgeous. These are, it's going to look stunning in Monaco. Well, the thing is, normally, you know me, I go, oh, this is my favourite. I'm looking at the colourways here. And I can't say that I've got a favourite. They're all so beautiful. They're all absolutely beautiful. So this one is base or bass. Um, so you get both of those plus your instructions, okay? The, the next one is this one here, which I can tell you the colour of this one is Sopran. There you go, that makes this one. Oh yeah, Soprano, Sopran. This is, I only read that because where that last one said bass or bass, this one says Sopran. This one will be soprano. Yep, yeah, nodding. I'm getting the nod. I'm getting the Norwegian nod. Nod, nod, <laughs> nod, nod. <laughs> Stop laughing at me. We've never met before. We've never met before. <laughs> That's the way of introducing myself. Isn't it? Anyway, anyway, let's move on. So, then, <laughs> oh, I do apologise. Right, okay. So, this one is called Samarkand. Yeah, got that one. Beautiful blues in there. <laughs> so are these... Oh, I'll ask in a minute. I think they all... Are they all little separate balls? Yes. Aren't they lovely? This is just... You can just tell how exquisite and how um, high quality this is. I mean, I know... No, obviously, you know I know nothing about knitting and everything like that, but it feels... Well, we can, we can ask anything about it in a second, right? So that's that one. Then I've got this one here, which is called Baritone. Oh, so all these songs, singers. I don't know what a Samarkand would be, though. No, no, we're all shaking our heads in here now. So we've had bass, we've had soprano, now we've got baritone. Lovely. That'd be really nice, wouldn't it? And then last but not least, this one reminds me of the seaside now. This one's called what? Samsara, this one's called. Because not only are you getting all different colours, but you're also getting like the different, you know, like the, I don't want to say uh, textures, because they're all the same texture, but you know, like this one's got wide blue and then one, you know what I mean? They're all slightly different, aren't they? So that's all for the cover rack. Oh, now for the cover rack, you will need uh, four and a half millimetre knitting needles. Which are those there? Yeah, four and a half. Circular knitting needles there. You don't have to have circular ones, I don't think. Do you? you can, I oh. recommend circulars. We recommend circular ones. I'll tell you why later. No, no, that's fine. You can do a lot of talking, Lisa, because <laughs> I know nothing. 4.49. Then the Dakota shawl, which is on this side of me here. Uh, this one, you just get one ball of each of these. So this is this one. So this one's called... That's Lilac Breeze. It's called what? Lilac Breeze. Lilac Breeze. On my thing here, it says Fly to Duft. 
Which That's means German, lilac breeze in German, I believe. Lilac breeze, but look at the colours. Look at the beautiful colours in there. Again, now is this the same? Is that? No. No, it's not, is it? It's beautiful though. It's very fine, isn't it? That's going to be... I was about to say, gonna, I bet you any money that feels like a cobweb once it's, once it's knitted up. That's beautiful. So that's Dakota in Lilac Breeze. Then I'm moving on to... Villa Rosa. I Villa Rosa. Villa Rosa. Roses. House of Roses. Again, beautiful colours, aren't they? That's your more kind of seductive, beautiful colours. But look, oh, it's going to change all the colours as you go through. It's going to change as you go through there. How to, oh, I'll, I'll ask in a minute. So many questions about this. And then last but not least, look at this one. That's that one. That's that one. And this is called? I think that's Muttley. I'm not even going to read the writing on there. <laughs> <laughs> Muttley, did you say? Motley. Now, that Motley, that's what Shakespeare's fool wore, wasn't it? Motley was the costume... That when, you know, you know the um, they used to do uh, um, the fool and being quarter coloured outfits with the that was called motley. So maybe it's from there, like Harlequin almost. It's lovely. The colours in there are beautiful. You see, I mm, I don't know again. I don't know which my favourite is. I do love that one though. Okay, and for this one, you will need knitting needles. We recommend circular needles, <laughs> four millimetre. Four millimeter. Yeah, uh, we're get, well, let's start. We, we're going to start with the cover act. So while we're doing that, I'm going to take this off and show you exactly because it's lovely. It's huge. This one, isn't that beautiful? That colorway is this one called Soprano. Right, and I'll take the Dakota off when we can start talking about the Dakota. I want to just, um, hello. Hello. Sorry I've called you all sorts of names all right. this, this morning. <laughs> Tell me how I say your first name. Uh, in Norwegian, it's pronounced Anakin. Right. But the English way is Anakin. Anakin, right. Okay, perfect. Now, so you're Norwegian. I am, yes. But you haven't flown in from Norway especially, No, no, no. I've been here for 30 years, just over 30 years. <gasps> Came I, as a wee girl then. Tiny, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, um, and, and so do you come over for work or something yeah, like that? Yeah, I came, actually came over to work with horses for a year, to work at a riding stable in Cornwall for a year. Okay. And uh, one of my riding pupils is now my husband. Oh, that's... <laughs> mm, okay. So, oh, it's, it's meant to be. I, I, I love these stories like this. You go to do one thing and, and venture yeah. off into something else. So you didn't make him move to, to Norway then? You no, stayed no, here. we stayed here, yeah. Oh, that's lovely. So have you always done this or is this...? Um, yeah, I've been knitting since I was quite young. I don't actually remember learning to knit. Um, my mum doesn't remember teaching me to knit. I think oh, I just picked it up because yeah. she was always knitting. And then I took a break when I first moved here because I couldn't understand English knitting patterns. Of course. Because uh, they're written quite differently from Norway and terminology and all that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. And then I got back into it again about... 15, 16, 17 years ago, I think. And then very quickly I started designing and teaching. And so, yeah, it's about 15 years since I started designing and teaching. How fantastic. And now it's your passion, it's your yes. love, isn't it? Yes. You absolutely yes. adore it. And can I just say that the yarns are exquisite, aren't yes, they? Yes, they're use? beautiful, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. where do these come from then? Uh, they're from a German company. Um, and I first discovered the Stabber Ball, the one for the Dakota Shawl, uh -huh. uh, a few years ago. And I started using that regularly. Right. And then yet last year, they brought out the Stabber Palin, which is the one for the cover actual. Uh -huh. So, that's the new yarn they brought out last year. And as soon as I saw it in the distributors brochure I was like oh gotta have some of that so so this I mean uh, uh, the thing is you can tell it's quality not just by feeling it but by the way they present it to you mm, it's not yeah. like oh here's a ball of wool or whatever it's yeah. actually beautifully presented yeah, yeah, isn't it yeah it's really interesting because it starts with solid color on each end so the one I've got here I've taken the yeah, yeah, do yours. yellow one out um so and then if you look each ball has so the next one next to the pink one has one strand of yellow and then two strands of yellow and then it's got slightly more yellow and that's, oh, that's pink. Why I was, that's what yeah. I was trying yeah. to describe. So it's, they just add in more of one colour and take right. away some of the other colour. So this one would start with the 
white and add in blue or yeah. blue and add yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. It's just, they're just, and what is it? What is it? Is it it's 100% um, pure merino. It's, oh, which are Spanish sheep specially bred for their yeah. wool, isn't it? You can't yeah. eat them. It's uh, the softest wool, yes. sheep's wool you can get. It's just beautiful. It's really, now, it feels quite fine. Is it? Is it a... It's a four-ply yarn, so it's oh, okay. not too fine. Um, it probably feels thinner than it actually is, but it is a four-ply yarn. Uh -huh. And what, when we come to that, what's that then? That's... It's supposed to be a similar way, but because it's just a single strand of yarn, so the Sauber pattern is uh, several strands spun together, right. and this uh, Sauber ball is just one strand. It's what we call a singles yarn. Oh, okay. And it makes you feel a lot thick, thinner, sorry, because you don't have the different strands kind of plumping of it course, out. Of course, yes. Yeah, you've just so got, got the one thinner, going around yeah. needle and everything. That's fantastic. So, uh, what else do you, do you, have you got social media that we can follow? Yes, I do. Uh, I am Yarn Addict Annie on uh, Instagram and Twitter. And then I got a Facebook group called Love of Lace Knitting. And then I got my website where you can find everything. And what's your, what's your website? Uh, Yarnaddict.co.uk. Okay, lovely. So, do you, do you specialize in, in yeah, this? Yeah, I specialize in lace knitting. Uh -huh. um, I also do some uh, traditional Scandinavian color work, but more lace knitting, really. Of course. That's... And is that because when you first started, you used to drop lots of stitches and it was stuffed off in <laughs> lots of. Because I know you drop a stitch, don't you, to make the hole? I've learned that since we Well, I. No, I actually started out doing a lot of Scandinavian colour, like Norwegian ski sweaters and stuff. Oh, okay, yeah. And then when I got back into knitting again, I just got intrigued by lace knitting and um, managed to teach myself um, how to do it. And then somebody bought me a really nice lace knitting book, which I absolutely fell in love with. Uh -huh. And that was it. I was Sometimes just hooked. that's all it takes, isn't it? Because it, I imagine this, it's much more... Um, fun to knit something like this than a Norwegian yeah. fishing jumper or whatever. Well, Norwegian sort of stranded ski jumpers and stuff are quite good, okay. um, but it's not something you can wear all year round because they're just too hot. No, so of course. things like this you can wear Perfect. all year round. Exactly, exactly. All right then, so we're going to start off by just going into a demonstration yep. on this yep. one, aren't we? So first of all, Coverack is? It's a place in Cornwall. A place in Cornwall. Uh, I've never heard of it, but it's obviously very beautiful. And where do you get your... Oh, I know what I was going to ask you. Did you say you do classes? Yes, I do. Obviously, at the moment, it's yeah. all up in the air. But when we're back to normal, are they d down? Uh, I do a lot in Devon, some in Cornwall. I do some in the Midlands. I do some bit here and there and okay, everywhere. Okay, people are able to find those yeah, on they're all my website. website. Perfect. Yeah. All right, then. Okay, let's, so where does the inspiration for... how? Because you must think... You must have designed loads, and you can think... How will I get this one to look a bit different to the yeah, last one? Yeah. So how does where does this one come from? So with this one, I actually started with the yarn. I got the yarn. I ordered the yarn, and I love this. I like pink. Right. Pink is my favorite. Hot bright pink is my favorite color. And I got this color, and I just thought, what can I do to make the most of those colors? So uh -huh. That's how I started really. And because of the colors, because you have two strands, two different colors kind of spun together. If you have a pattern that's too complicated, too intricate, it kind of disappears in the yarn a little bit. So I tried to come up with a pattern that would show off the yarn, uh -huh. but also would be interesting to knit. Yes. But wouldn't kind of you wouldn't completely lose the lace pattern in it because you don't want to do all that work and then not actually see no, the lace exactly, pattern. No, exactly, exactly. So yeah, so I started with the pink color. Went around to the yellow until uh -huh. I got to the middle and then I went back again. So how does your ball Oh, do you change it? So yeah, that's change. not all one ball then, no, that's no. lots of different balls. Yeah. So you so I started, change. Yeah, so I started with the yeah, uh, pink. Oh, so I, so I know and now that you start knitting yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. And then you change and the ball. And then I change. And if you look carefully, you can see each section gets slightly smaller because the rows get longer. Oh. So you increase on every other row, so the rows get longer till you get to the middle, and then the yellow section in the middle is worked straight. It's the longest, but yeah. it's the narrowest. So that's two balls of yellow in the middle. Right. And then you go back to the pink oh, again. Oh, I see. So this, that there has used up one ball, that's one ball the middle, of everything. Yes. It's just exquisite. It's beautiful. So how do I start? What, how do I make it? Okay. So um, one, first I'll just say about the reason I recommend the circular needles is because you will be increasing and you end up with quite a lot of stitches by the time you get to the middle. Oh, I imagine. And then oh, you yes, decrease. Yeah. So you can start on straight needles, but you have to change the circular mm -hmm. ones because there'll just be too many um, okay. stitches. But you knit the same way as you do on straight needles. A lot of people get confused by the circular needles, but you just have one needle tip in each hand. Right. And then you knit. And when you get to the end of the row, you just turn and like knit back like you would be straight yeah. needles. 
What happens if you put it down halfway, if the phone goes halfway you through a row? You just push it into the middle of the needle. Right. So if you've got half the stitches on each needle, you just push both needles, just push them into the, onto the cable, and they're much more secure yeah, yeah, than on perfect. straight needles. Okay. So yeah, that's like, you can stop halfway through a row, and that's no problem. Right, let me just untangle myself. <laughs> so with this one, now there are a lot of charts in this pattern but there are written instructions as well. So if you don't like knitting charts, there are written instructions as well. So don't let the charts put you off. Uh, what do I, you prefer to work to? I, I can't work from written instructions. I have to have charts. Oh, really? Yeah. And I know some people are completely the opposite, but I really like the charts. And um, if I show you the chart on the bottom of this page, I made it a bit bigger to make it easier to see. So this is the second chart, which is the one I'm going to show you now. Uh -huh. And you can see there's a section here on the right yeah. with a purple line. And that's uh, the edging. So that's the bit on the end that is a little bit kind of wavy. Uh -huh. um, and then the purple line is actually where I put a stitch marker on my knitting, which is why I recommend the stitch markers. Okay, we'll come to those in a second, um, yeah. And then you go into the main body of the shawl. So to start with, you're actually increasing for chart A, you're increasing for the edging and for the body of the shawl. So that's why the marker is useful. Uh -huh. um, and then from chart B onwards, you are increasing just for the body of the shawl. Um, so you can see after that purple line, there is some circles that go up gradually. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Like longer. And that's yarn overs or yarn forward, which is the same thing. Um, which is and the they're, hole. Yeah, which is the holes. Yeah. And they gradually increase so you get to the full width of the shawl and then you start decreasing right, to get okay. to the other so, end. So I've never seen one of these before. So right. do you literally knit chart A? Yeah. Then once you finish chart A, you move on to chart yeah. B. Yeah. And so literally you're building this yeah. in sections. You have to, if you see there's a red box on chart D. B, oh, and C, yeah. B, C and D. Yeah. Um, that's the pattern repeat. So each time you work chart B, you'll be working those eight stitches in the pattern repeat right. one more time. But uh -huh. the pattern, the actual written pattern text on page two and on page two of the yeah. pattern will tell you exactly what order you do things in and of how course. many stitches you'll have. You get stitch counts regularly. It tells you how many stitches you're increasing and decreasing and all that kind of stuff. Okay. To help you keep track of where you are. But if you're not, if you're worried about charts, don't worry about it. I do actually have a really good tutorial on my website. Okay. I w talked about it quite a lot last time I was here with Rebecca a couple uh -huh. of months ago. Um, but there is a really good tutorial on my website. Uh, but there are written instructions as well. So if anyone's worried about charts, yeah, don't yeah. worry, you don't I, need to I, do I the don't charts. Knit, but I think I prefer this yeah. to that because I don't because until you learn what all those things mean, at least here, you can see that I have to do it tells you exactly what you have to do. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I was like that as well, and then I got used to Charles, course, and now I can't course, yeah. knit from anything so, else. So, <laughs> have you drawn all the, they, they, this is all your work, you've drawn yes. these charts out? Yeah, there is a charting software that I use. Oh, okay. I'm not that clever. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'm going to... Oh, can I just say there's only two of this colourway left? Oh, right, okay. So, it's about yep. to go, about to go. Yeah, it's colourway. a really great colourway for the summer as well, because yeah. it's so bright yeah. and cheerful. Okay, so um, I'm going to demonstrate a little bit from the um, beginning of chart. B, just to show some of the stitches because there are some slightly more unusual stitches in this shawl. Uh -huh. None of them are difficult, but I'm just going to demonstrate. I'm going to do row seven and eight of chart B. All right, so, so I like to start every row with a slip stitch. You don't have to do a slip stitch, but I like to do it. So I normally knit continental style, which is the yarn in my left hand, uh -huh. but I will show some of it English style and some of it continental style because Oh, so it's a difference? Yes. English style, you hold the yarn in your right hand. Continental style, you hold the yarn in your left hand. And that's how Scandinavians, Germans... But it doesn't make any, does it make any difference to the no, finished stitch? No, it looks exactly the same. It's just where, yeah, yeah, <coughs> where the yarn yeah. is kept. Yeah. <coughs> so you start... Sorry, I'm going to ask you right, this question. That's right. The slip stitch. Why did you do a slip stitch and what would happen if you didn't do a okay. slip stitch? So you don't have to do the slip stitch. If you don't want to do it, you just knit the first stitch. I like the slip stitch because it looks really neat. Right. You get a much neater edge with this kind of elongated stitch oh, on the edge. Oh, okay, because that's going to be the edge of... Yeah, okay. yeah. 
So I like to start each row with a slip stitch, but you don't have to, mm -hmm. but whether you choose to slip it or not, you have to stick with it all the way through. Oh, okay, you can't so, swap and change between the two. No, because it'll look awful if you do that. <coughs> right. okay. So let me show you how to do a yep. slip stitch. So if you do it English style, you want to have the yarn in front of your right needle, mm -hmm. go into the first stitch purlwise and take it off. And then, and this is the important bit, you have to take the yarn between the needles to the back. Right. Like that, and then you can carry on knitting. Right. And I'm going to carry on knitting um, continental style because I'm quick at that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I did a slip on, knit one, and then I'm going to do a yarn over, which is the same as yarn forward. Uh -huh. So if you're doing it English style, you just take the yarn between the needles to the front, uh -huh. just like you do when you're purling, but you knit the next stitch from there. If you do it continental style, you just take the yarn over the needle like that. Right. And then we're going to knit one. Then we're going to do a knit two together, which is just the same as knitting one stitch, you're just knitting two. And then we're going to do a double yarn over, so we're going to do two yarn overs. So English style, one, and then go round to the back between the needles and back to the front again. Uh -huh. So you're wrapping the yarn around the needle twice. Continental style, you do it once, twice. Right. And then we're going to do an SSK, which is a left-leaning decrease, so knit two together leans to the right. SSK leans to the left and that's how you get the shape in the lace pattern is by different uh -huh. left and right leaning decreases. Okay. So SSK, whether you're doing continental or English style, you slip on stitch knit wise, you put your needle in as if you're going to knit, slip it, put your needle into the next stitch and slip it off and then you put your left needle Oh I see, into SS, the slip, slip, knit. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So then you put your left needle into the front of those two stitches from the left, so you mm -hmm. can see my needles are crossing over each other, and the right needle is where I need to do to knit it. So I knit those two together, so I knit, did knit two together, which is a decrease, mm -hmm. two yarn overs, which is two increases, mm -hmm. and a SSK, which is a decrease. And that gives me these really big holes. But it's, a, it's a hole that's not going to come unraveled. No, no, it's yeah. not, no. And then we do the same thing again on this row. So we do knit two together, yarn over twice, SSK. Mm -hmm. Now later on in the pattern, you have to do an SSSK. And that's the same as an SSK. You just slip three stitches. Okay. So you can see now on the chart, I'm at the red line, uh, sorry, purple line. So I slip my marker across. Doesn't matter what, time, what type of marker you use. I've got a really tiny one, but... Those are a bit bigger, I think. But yeah. you just take the marker across, yarn over, and then I'm going to knit, hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to knit six, one, two, three, four. So that's the marker I put in for the pattern repeat. So I know now that I'm at that red line yep. on the chart, because that's the beginning of my pattern repeat. And I like to put a marker there just so it makes me think, oh, I've got to stop and look at my chart now. Right, OK. And then I'm going to knit two. And then I'm going to do a yarn over. And then I'm going to do a double decrease called SK2PO, or slip on, knit two together, pass, slip, stitch over. So you don't have to remember all these yeah. abbreviations. They're all in the pattern. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do another double decrease later on on the other pattern. Right. So slip on, take it off knit wise, knit two together, and then you take that slip stitch and lift it over. So you're basically going from three stitches down to one, uh -huh. and you get like a little triangle. Right. And then you do a yarn over again, and then you knit um, three. And then that's the end of the pattern repeat which is the end, the red line oh, on your the chart. Oh, they're stitch markers. And that's my stitch marker. <coughs> I see. And then I'm going to do a yarn over, knit two together, knit one to finish the row. Uh -huh. So I'm just going to knit quickly back on row A because there's something I want to show you. I need to show you what to do with those double yarn overs. Okay. So I'm just going to knit very, very quickly because uh -huh. row, all the wrong side rows are just plain knit. Oh, okay. And this is why I like continental knitting, because it is really, really quick. Yeah. So hang on. when you get to the marker, you just slip it across. Right, this colorway is now sold out. Flip it across. And then when you get to the edging section, so I know I'm at, on the edging because I went past my blue marker here. Right. Knit one, and then I got this double yarn over. So you can see I got the yarn over my needle twice. 
Now, if you knit this double yarn over incorrectly, it won't come out, it'll look funny. Right. So the way you knit it is you knit the first one as normal, and it's a big loop, and then I've got another strand on my left hand needle, and then I knit that strand through the back loop. So I just put my needle in through the back of that loop, there we go, mm -hmm. and then I knitted. So you just knit it as normal, but through the back loop. And then I'm going to knit two, and then I got another double yarn over. So I'm going to knit the first one as normal. Now, when you knit it, if you pull it and both the other strand comes off, and you think, oh, I've done something wrong there because uh -huh. I pulled the second strand off, don't worry. All you need to do is put your needle in and pull it back on. Oh, or if okay. you get to it and you find you've only got one yarn over and you need two, all you do is you just wrap the yarn around and put the strand over your needles. So you just got to make sure you've got two strands oh, there. Because they're not stitches, they're just yarn they're around. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, what we're doing now is basically making them into proper stitches. Yeah. So I knit the first yarn over and then I knit the second one through the back loop. And it's just when you have these big double yarn overs that you need to do that. Yeah. Um, and they're just on the edging. And then I'm just going to knit to the end of the row. So that's basically all the stitches that you need to know to knit the cover rack pattern. Oh. No pearl stitches, just knit stitches. Yeah. SSK, knit two together, yarn overs, and the SK2PO. And you can find, if you forget those stitches, if you forget, you can obviously come back and watch this yeah, on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, yeah. If you forget how to do it, I've got loads of tutorials on my website, and there's also loads of tutorials on YouTube. Perfect. This is this is the next colorway. I think the uh, website's on your instructions anyway, isn't it? Yes, yeah, my yeah, website, the website and it? also to get your um, oh, wrong one to get your um, newsletter because you do a newsletter yes, as well, don't you? I do. <clears throat> Very quickly, I've got two two messages here, and then I'll need, just need to go through the colorways this because on the website they haven't put the right not the right color they haven't got the colors with them so I just need to go through them. Uh, Anakin's designs are gorgeous. My knitting is shocking, so I'm always fascinated to watch an expert at work. We know who that is, but we're not saying your name in case your husband's downstairs. And. Uh, I did Anakin's introduction to lace knitting some years ago in Bovey Tracy. It was excellent and made chart reading so simple from Roxana. Thank nice, you. Yeah, it? thank you. Right. Okay. Let me just go through the colorways. This that one sold out. This is the next favorite one here. So if you want the cover act in this colorway, which is summer camp, beautiful blues there and the black. So you start with the black, no, start with the blue, add a bit of black, add a bit more black, add a bit more black, add a bit more, add a bit more, then total black. You get two of those. So now, would you start with the black one on that one or just start with the blue one on that one? You can do either. But whichever way you do it, the last colour is going to be your double stripe yeah, down the middle, yeah, isn't it? So if yeah. you want a double stripe of black down the middle, or you want a double stripe of blue down yeah, them, that's yeah, how you decide, yeah. isn't it? And then on the second half, you just knit in the other direction. Yes, two, exactly. Or you do the yarn. Oh, I see, the so other you direction. knit this one all the way around, all that yarn yeah. gone, so then you start yeah. with this one. And oh, I, need to ask are, a I need to ask a quick question in a minute when I've done the These are colours. really easy, because they, they it's just looped around the label, so you can just unloop it, take oh. one ball off, and then, and then loop back it back again. on, so you don't, like, lose the direction of which order they were in. Of course, because you don't want to get them confused, do exactly. you? Right, so that's that one. Then which one do you want next, Kat? Samsara, which is this one. Oh, uh, Kat seeing herself on the beach in this one. Beautiful, 36 99 You get the instructions and both of these for your 36 99 There's only three left. There's only three of that colorway left. Then, which one? Oh, base, which was the first one, wasn't it? Uh, which is your monochrome. Now, would I want white down the middle? Oh, no, you see, I'd want black down the centre there and working its way out to the cream. That's what I think I'd do on that one. You get both of those and the instruction, 36 99 Brilliant price when you get all this luxury and all those letters, SKSKs and all the charts. And, and also, you wouldn't normally get both, would you? You, not always, you not, get both. Not all designers do no, both, no. No. And finally then this one, the Bumblebee one. I'd call this the Bumblebee one. Baritone. Now again, I think I'd go for, ooh, what would I have down the middle? 
Yeah, I think I'd have the black in the middle as well on that. This one's sort of saying evening wear to me, this one, for some reason. Little black dress, throw this round it. It's going to be beautiful, isn't it? 36 99 Right. I was just going to say, when you come to the end of one colour, mm. is it easy to then change to your next colour? Yeah, so the way the pattern actually tells you where I change, so it'll okay. tell you where to change. I actually just left a bit of yarn about that long hanging down yeah. when I we won the old colour, and then about the same amount with the new colour, and then I start knitting. Right. And then at the end, I go back and weave them in. Right. Um, I've, there are various joints you can do, um, but I just find it easier but, yeah. to leave one strand and then just weave it in later. Okay. Also, you don't want any knots or anything like that because no. it's so fine and beautiful. Yeah, you never it? want knots in your yarn. No. Never. You, ever. No, ever. 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 Oh, okay. Never, ever. Because they can come undone and then it unravels. Oh, no, of course. Uh, Kat, what were you saying? Sorry. Oh, everyone's fascinated by how fast you knit, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> right, shall we move on? Are, are, you, are you all right to move on to Dakota yes. now, yep. then? So now, we're moving on to Dakota, then. Now, let me get this one off here so you can see this one. Oh. This is Motley. Now, this is a slightly smaller. Oh, it's lovely. Look at that. Look. Now, <clears throat> the, the, the lace work is only on this bottom bit of this. It's yeah. sort of all... What is this? What's this? Just normal? It's okay. garter stitch. <coughs> so garter what I stitch. did with that one was I wanted it to be something that people who are new to lace knitting could have a go at. Oh, perfect. So, so you, you start up here. Yes, yeah, so you start up in the corner and then you just do garter stitch while you get used to the shaping of the shawl. Uh -huh. And then once you've got that sorted out, then and then add in a bit of easy lace. Beautiful, isn't it? And then it finishes at the red row on the end there. Now, are, are these different lengths of yarn or do, are they joined together? They're all joined together. So you can't t decide no. when you the just, colour changes. You just keep knitting. So on this one, you have to start with the green yeah, you and start yellow. With, well, the thing is, all the balls are different. So if you look at the uh, Villa Rosa that you've got there and this one, this one oh, started yes, with got, a pink, and that I've one starts with a brown. <clears throat> they all start with different colours. Uh, they all have the same colours in them, but they start at a different point. Because they've just wound them off at however many metres. I guess so, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. So you can pick up, like, several balls of them, and they'll all be slightly all be different. different. Now, this lovely mulberry colour on the outside, is that repeated again inside? Do you see the colours twice, or do you only see I, the colours once? Uh, no, I think you see them more than once. Okay. Um, if you want to know what, yeah, it comes back. So the way I look to see what's inside them is I just pull it out in the middle. Uh -huh. And then I can kind of see. So this one's got the pink, a slightly lighter pink or mauvey purple, yeah. whatever that is. Pale pink and then this brownie. There's also a mid, there's also yeah. looks like there's a mid-tone yeah. in there yeah. as well. So I've got the mulberry, then I've got the softer version, then I've got the mauve, then I've got the pink, the soft pink. Yeah, it's so it kind of just shades from one colour to the other. Exactly. So you, you don't choose when you no. stop. Like on that one, you stop when you tell yeah. us to stop. We yeah. change colour. This one, you just keep going. Yeah. So that's another good thing. And that's isn't it? what I like about these yarns because they're just like a surprise. You don't quite no, know what's yeah, going to exactly, come next, and they're exactly. just fun. But you know, it's all going to go beautifully together. Yeah, yeah. So there's no panic that you can get halfway through and something's going to be a lime green in the yeah, middle. Yeah, no, no. Right, this is Villa Rosa that we're doing here at the moment. Now we'll change the graphics. That's Villa Rosa. You get the ball of, of yarn and you get the instructions, which is the Dakota in Villa Rosa. So that and that are in, in the equal lead at the moment. Oh, no, no, Villa Rosa's taken over. Villa Rosa's taken over now. I think it's because you just explained that it's a good one for people who've never done it before mm. to do their stocking stitch and then get into it. And then if you find you don't like it, just do the whole pattern in stocking stitch, couldn't you? Garter really? stitch. Garter, garter, garter. Garter yeah, I mean, stocking. if you decide you don't want to do the lace, you can just carry what's on. That, what's the difference between garter stitch and stocking stitch? So, then? garter stitch, you knit every row. Right. Stocking stitch, you knit, knit one, one row and pull back. I knew, I knew that. I knew that. Right, okay, let me do the, the third colourway, which is this one. Lilac Breeze. Now, again, you, this one's got more... So, you've got, the like, the deep purple in there. You've got an amethyst in there. You've got a... Uh, Rose to France amethyst in there, and then we go to aquamarine in that one. Look, I like the way this, the color names. Oh, 
<laughs> Kat and I used to work in. Oh, and and I've never worked with uh, Emma in jewelry. We all worked. We all started oh, working right, okay. in, on a jewelry channel. You see, so we all know that. So that's how I best describe yeah, colours. Just, to me, it's just shades of purple and blue. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Because how many times can you say purple, 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 purple? Yeah, exactly. Anyway, that's beautiful as well, isn't it? That's Lilac Breeze, that one. And you'll need your size four millimeter knitting needles for this one. Circular. We recommend circular, listen to me. Yeah, I recommend circular ones. Okay, so are we going to do uh, any, any stitching from this one? Yes, we are. Perfect. So I've um, started the shawl the way it starts in the pattern. Right. So if I put this flat down here. Yeah, lovely. So it starts up here with just six stitches. And then the way the shawl is shaped is that you increase two stitches at the beginning of every right side row. And then on row eight, every time you come to row eight, you cast off four stitches. Can you see it's got a little tiny... Oh, It'll be scholar. more kind of pronounced when I block it. Yes. Um, but to start with, it's quite just gentle. But when you block it, you pull those bits out. So, so that bit, the top bit where you've added two stitches. That's the smooth bit here. That's this. That is that this edge here. Yeah. And that's if you look at here. the other end of the shawl, I shore, can see the other edge here. It's got like a little cobweb. That's the, that's the cast off edge. If you look further up, that's it. Further up at the beginning of the lace section, that's it. That's where you the little sawtooth. Uh, Yes, yes, it's yes, the hang down. They are. That's where you cast off four stitches. Oh. So it means that every time you knit eight rows, you're actually only increasing four stitches because you increase two stitches on every right side row, and then on row eight you cast off four stitches, so you decrease four stitches basically. But what's beautiful is this side's got that lovely, not scallop, inverted yeah. scallop. This side's got that almost like a lace. Yeah. border to it all the way around the, the start there hasn't it yeah and that's created by the the increases we use to shape the shawl right so i'll show you how to do that oh, yes now. please yeah um, i'm also going to show you a bit of the lace stitches uh -huh. um so i'm actually going to show you the row seven and eight of the garter stitch section and then i'm going to show you the first row of the lace pattern okay perfect so you start off with the garter stitch if you get bored with the garter stitch you can start the lace earlier oh you yeah. just <laughs> <laughs> you just need to know that the number of stitches you have, you need to be able to um, take off six or deduct six. And then if you can divide the rest of the stitches by eight, you can start the lace pattern. Have you got a thingy on your website on this? No, but people can message me if they okay, want Okay, perfect. So there's them. an email on the back of your pattern. There's a web website. A website, sorry. Yeah, and all website. my contact details and are on And you can there. send a message on the website. Yeah, yeah or through social media or whatever. Yeah. I'm quite approachable. Right, so again, I start with a slip stitch on this one because I like slip stitches. If you don't like slip stitches, you can start with a knit one. Just decide which one you want to do and stick with it. And again, you get charts and you get the written instructions uh -huh. as well. So if you don't like the charts, you don't have to use the charts. So I'm going to do the last two rows of the garter stitch. Uh -huh. so this time, I'll show you how to slip the stitch in um, Continental. And just notice there isn't a huge amount of contrast in this between this and the table. So I hope you can see. So to slip it continental style, I put my needle under the working yarn, then I put my finger on it so it doesn't slip off, go into the stitch purlwise, take it off, and then I take my needle tip and I just dip it under that working yarn so it slides between the needles to the back. So that's how you do continental style. Um, but you can also do it English style, of course. And then the next stitch, you're gonna turn the next stitch into three stitches. So we go in and we knit it normal, Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter whether you do it English style or continental style. Actually, I'll do it English style. So you go in and knit it as normal. Then you go through and you knit it through the back loop. So instead of going in through the front again, you just twist your needle around to the back and go in through the back loop. Mm -hmm. Knit that and you leave the stitch on the left hand needle. So I haven't taken it off my left hand needle yet. And now I knit it through the front again. Like that. Oh, hang on. I've done something wrong here. Right, let's do that again because <laughs> I did something wrong. Right, let's try it again. So you go in through the front, knit it, leave the stitch on your left hand needle. So I haven't taken it off. Mm -hmm. If you're struggling, just use your thumb to hold on to it. Then I go in through the back loop, knit it, leave it on the left hand needle. And then I go in through the front loop and knit it. 
and then I can take the stitch off the left hand, left hand needle. So I've now got four stitches on my right hand needle, uh -huh. but I've only actually used up two of the stitches that were on my left hand needle when I started yes. the row. So I've increased two stitches. And that's why on the chart, um, you got the slip one and then the um, knit front back front, so KFBF. Then you got two crosses and those two crosses are just a placeholder because I need something in the chart that shows you that you've got, now got four stitches on your needle. Uh -huh. If you're following the written instructions, it'll just say KFBF and then you'll go on to whatever the next stitch is. Okay. But in the chart, we just need a placeholder. So a lot of people get confused by those crosses or X's and think, why well, they're there, but they're just the placeholders. You just ignore them, just skip over them. And then I'm just going to knit really, really quickly to the end of the row. Let's yeah, see do how that quick because I can do it. while you do that, people say, I've never seen anyone knit like that before. It doesn't like, look like you're putting yarn over the needle, so I'll have to watch it on slow speed later on YouTube. That's from Christine. Yeah. Claire says, how are you knitting so fast? I've knitted for years. You just twiddle the needles and it's a stitch. Um, Christine thought that this one was crochet. She really, she really loves this one. She thought it was crochet. Yeah, a lot of people think it is, but no, it's knitted. Yeah. I'm not a very good crochet. Oh, okay. Okay, so I got to the end of the row really, uh -huh. really quickly. Now, I'm on row eight now, so I'm going to cast off four stitches. But if we do a regular cast off, it's going to be really tight. So I'm doing a special cast off called the Russian cast off, which is a stretchy cast off. Right. And don't ask me why it's called Russian cast off, because uh, I have no why idea. Why is it called Russian cast off? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> right, so okay, let's watch this then. I'm going to knit two stitches. So knit a continental style or English style, whatever you want to do. Knit two stitches. They're on my right hand needle. Then I put my left hand needle into the front of those two stitches from the left. So the left hand needle is at the front, the right hand needle is at the back. And then I knit them together. So now I've got one stitch on my uh -huh. right hand needle and I've cast off one stitch. Then I knit the other stitch, next stitch. Two stitches on my right hand needle. Left needle into the front of those two stitches. Just like we did for the SSK earlier. Then I knit them together. Knit the next one. So let me do the, the next one. Lost track now. I think this is the third one. Left needle into the front of those two stitches. Knit them together. And then one more. As you can see, I'm much slower doing it English style. Mm -hmm. um, left needle into the front. Knit them together. And that's cast of four stitches. And it just makes the um, cast of a bit more stretchy. Right. And when you come to the end of the shawl, the end of the lace, you have to use that cast off to cast off the last row. Otherwise, it'll end up being too tight. Right. So let me show you because this one has the yarn over, so yarn forward um, as, the, as the cover actual. But it, has, it only has one decrease. So the only decrease in this one is a double decrease called S2KPO. So I'll show you that quickly. So I right. slip one, knit into the front, back, front. So I'm now on row one of the chart. And then I'm going to knit one, yarn over. So to do the yarn over continental style, I just take it over the needle like that. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to knit two. And then last time on the cover actual, we did slip one, knit two together. This time we're going to slip two. So I put my needle into the next two stitches, take them both off. So I slip two stitches off together knitwise. I knit one and then I take put my needle into the two slip stitches and make sure you catch both of them and I lift them over. And it just gives you a slightly different decrease. Mm -hmm. Knit two, yarn over, and then I'm at the end of the pattern repeat. So, oh, I've just dropped a stitch. There we go. So I'm now on the chart, I'm at the end of the pattern repeat, here where that red line is. So now I'm going to go back to the beginning of the pattern repeat where that red line is uh -huh. and knit it again. So I'm going to do knit one, yarn over, knit two, and then I slip two together, knit wise, knit one, and then I lift two stitches, the two slip stitches over, and then I knit two, yarn over, and then I've got four stitches left, which is correct. So I haven't made a mistake, mm -hmm. which is always a relief. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the end of that row. And then um, the chart did actually 16 rows, um, but the first eight rows and the next eight rows, the lace pattern is the same. 
It's just I had to do 16 rows to make the repeat fit. And it's uh -huh. just like a technical maths thing, really. Right. Um, but you've got written instructions as well, so you don't have to use the chart if you mm -hmm. don't want to. So how do we start making lace then? So that's, that's it. That's the it. Yarn over, the yarn over, slip two, knit one, pass the slip stitches over. And that's, that's lace, yes. And you just keep doing that and that's yep. going to create all of so this. So on this pattern, it's got six rows of lace. So row one, row two is just plain, row three is lace, row four is plain, row five is lace. And then you've got uh, one, two, three rows of garter stitch. And then you've got six rows of lace, three rows of garter stitch. And you just repeat those 16 rows until you've got enough left to do the last 14 rows for the edging, which is oh. the bit in red on the shoulder. Yes, 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 yeah. And that, that edging is um, basically the same, but on the final row, it's got knit two together and SSK in as well, which we did for the cover act shawl as well. Um, all the um, symbols in the chart are in the chart key below, so you always have to refer to the chart key to make sure you're are they know what they mean your codes or are they the national knitting code well there isn't a standard oh isn't there no there isn't a standard system for knitting abbreviations i think there is for crochet but not right. for knitting no um but most designers use the symbols i use because we all use the same charting software oh of course but yeah. some of the magazines and book publishers use their own or slightly different symbols okay i've got two questions catherine mitchin saying if she just carried on Doing this and didn't do the laces, there enough yarn. Yes. And which which uses up the most yarn? That if you decide to do all of it like that, if you knew how to do it and you love this, would there be enough yarn to do it all in the lace? Uh, I think there will be. But I, what I would do is every time you do the sixteen rows of the lace pattern, weigh the yarn so you know how <coughs> much yarn sixteen oh, rows of take, yes, yes, and then yes. just keep weighing because the last section is fourteen rows so if you've got enough for 16 rows you'll, you'll have enough right. 14. Um, I also have like a 10% safety margin <laughs> in the yarn so you should have enough. Do you have very sensitive um, weighing scales because if yes. I put this on my kitchen weighing scale it would say there's nothing in the yeah. bowl. Yeah. No I have little tiny ones that weigh to the ground. We, we had somebody else didn't we the other day saying oh weigh, weigh your 10 grams weight and I was yeah. like mine weighing scale wouldn't yeah. even notice. No that. I have a really tiny one that I bought years ago I got two of is them. Is it special? Is it special one for knitting? No, I just, I don't know. I, I bought it from somebody at the yarn show. Um, oh, okay. And they're just really small ones and they weigh like in 100 gram increments. So oh, okay. uh, one of them is broken. So oh. it's on my desk. And then Time I got another one. And I can't find them. Oh. <laughs> and what's, oh yes, uh, Kat says, how would you wear this bit with the with the plain bit? Is there any particular way to wear it? Let's have a look. The way the it was on it. the, um, you can wear it in, various different ways. Um, you can have it kind of draped across your shoulder. That's my daughter modelling that. That's a few years oh, ago now. How old's your daughter? Well, she's 26 now, but that was probably when she was about 18. I was going to 26. Whatever everyone's, I had everyone coming in today, all looking young, much younger than they, they are. What's so the, uh, now, is she a court? She'll be a Cornish girl through and through then, won't she? Yes, yeah, she will be. With just yes. a bit of Norwegian blood. Yes. Aww. And is she created? Does she do knitting? She does embroidery. Oh. So yes. I have to get her on, yeah. We have embroidery on our show. Is she doing I mean, it for yeah. a living or is she doing it for No, she, no she's, she's actually a statistician. She's not, I don't even know what that one of those is. She's clever. She's clever yes, then. Yes, she's oh, more clever. clever than me. Oh. <laughs> um, and, and there was another question. I've got the second question now. Never mind. It'll come to me in a minute. I've got a question from Nina and then I'll remember mine, Nina. Uh, hi, John Nankin. Really enjoying the demo. Which shawl would be best for a beginner from Nina in Northumberland? Dakota. The Dakota, Nina. So, we've only got that in... Well, no, we, we've got that in three colourways, but they're absolutely flying out. So, I'll remind you of the three colourways now. Anyone particularly first? Oh, hang on. The, the Motley's in. The Motley's in. So, let me do that. So, Nina, that's your Motley one there, which will make you this one. It's lovely. Is it, I know what my question is. Is there a right side and a wrong side? Yes, there is. Um, that's... The right side the one you i thought it was yeah. but i just wanted to check because when you turn it round because you knit back and everything yeah. whatever you can't yeah. think well, it so the garter right. stitch section will look the same but the lace looks slightly different yeah. that's the right side yeah okay so that's your motley there you get one ball that's enough to make this plus your instructions 17.99 and there's so many colors there well look you can look on here can't you so many colors and each ball now you can't guarantee that yours is going to start with the teal and going into the purple, going to the pink. Because look at this one. This one starts with a yellow and green one, which I don't think even is on this one, yeah, is it? Yeah, it's the lace section. 
Oh, there. Is it there? Yeah. There, there it yeah. is, there it is. So, and also I presume the lengths of the different colours won't be regular either. So there'll be a shorter bit of yellow and then a longer bit of red. Well, then... yeah, I, I think they are, the sequence is the same, but they just start at different points. Yeah. But yeah, some of them, you might have a shorter stretch of purple and a longer stretch of yeah, green or whatever. Yeah, because there, if you look there, the, the green yeah. and yellow, which is on the top here, that's only kind of one little stripe, whereas the gold yeah. seems but to be It also much... depends on, because um, at the beginning, your rows are much shorter and then towards the end, they're much longer. Oh, of course. So, so, so your so colours could change anywhere. They won't change necessarily. They won't be in that order, but also yeah. they could change because where, where you started from. Your, yeah. So you might not have a really thick yellow one there. Your yellow might be up there or it might be down there. And that's just the fun of the thing. It's just a surprise. You've just got to be adventurous. And exactly. And this is, <laughs> you say this was four ply? Yes. This is four ply. It feels like a thin four ply because yes. it's a single strand. Yes. It's not a spun, like a multi ply And is it yarn. strong? Like, because, I mean, you were tugging it around on your needles there. Yeah, I mean, it's strong enough for knitting. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I've never broken one. Okay. Um, and I do pull quite hard on mine because I do knit quite yeah. fast. Okay, so that's your mark. I've got to get the time. But also, by. people are worried about the thinness of the yarn. The needles are four millimetre, which they're not tiny needles. No. Okay. So it's not scary. No. So that's your, she said it, not me. Not scary. That, that's your motley. That's your motley. Villa Rosa is in the lead at the moment. This is your Villa Rosa. That's this one. Beautiful. If that's the colours in there, are so exquisite. Oh, got to go. And then this one here. Lilac Breeze, this one's called. Seventeen ninety nine. I think that's amazing because if you went into a little boutique shop and bought some of this, there's no way it'd be seventeen ninety nine. I know we've got to knit it, but there's no mm. way that'd be seventeen ninety nine. But knitting is part of the fun. You yes, know, you yes. get the, the value of, in the yarn is the knitting time and all the years of wearing it. Yes, of course. Beautiful. And the gift if you're gonna gift it as well. Yeah, Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I tend to wear shorts like that as scarves in the winter as well. So Oh yes, totally. Oh, that'd be lovely. And then the thing is, you often think of wool as being, oh, I wouldn't want it against my skin. But actually, this is really soft. Yeah. This is like a cobweb, this, isn't it? It's so beautiful. OK, so that's that one. Uh, 17 99. Do you want me to recap on anything else before we go home? Just the needles you need for this one, which is the four, which is this one here. Four ninety nine. There are lots of different needles on the website. Oh, and also there were these. You need these. Stitch markers. 14. Right, Kat's saying, if she used four and a half needles on this, what difference would that make? It would be looser, but you may also run out of yarn. Oh, they don't, they don't, Kat. Don't do that. Don't do that. Unless your knitting is very tight, then you can get away with it. I don't think she knit. She's just asking All right, knows yeah, me. No, if, if, <laughs> if you don't knit to the correct tension. So most people don't bother checking their tension on shawls. No. Like, know that, but... If your tension is very, very different, then you may run out of yarn. Is there a tension? Do you have a tension yes. on this? You there do. is the information on the front page. So on the front page tells you the size, the tension, and all the yarn needles. And all Perfect. That kind of stuff. Right, very quickly, there is one of the cover racking work. Base, the black, which one's that? The, oh, this one, there's only one of these left. If you've got it in your basket, it's not guaranteed. You need to check out. There's only one that's not been checked out yet. Okay, thank you so much for coming here. This way it is. Took her eight hours, eight hours to get here yesterday. Traffic was awful. Uh, well, let's <laughs> hope it's not on the way back. The plans you had yesterday, let's hope you get to do them today. So thank you very much. I look forward thank to you. seeing you again soon. And uh, when's um, Yarn Lane on next? Monday. Oh, it's me. Me, Monday. Uh, is it Wendy Orlando? Wendy Orlando on Monday doing the next block of that. Now, I know a lot of you have been asking on the Facebook fan page. It's on Monday. When do, that means she must be on the whole show, is she? Oh, dear me. I don't know what you're talking about. I'll see you at Sewing Street tomorrow morning. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow morning at 8. Don't be late.